Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, this is Zero from DuckDragon.info and today we're gonna take a look at the Yak Tiger 88 and the reason I'm looking at this thing is because it's going to get removed from the in-game store soon that means from the tech tree so from... if it wants to load right... where is it? here um, this is gonna get removed and later on like a week or two weeks later it's also getting removed from the gift store so on the website and I figured I'll get this video out hopefully in time to help you decide if you want to pick one up before it goes away. So the new tank introduced is going to be the Kanonen Panzer, and it's going to be a tier 8 as well. I do believe, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a tier 8 as well. And it's basically, the Kanonen Panzer is basically an E25 um, one tier higher. It's in many many ways very similar it has a similar gun type um, you know fast firing gun um, penetration is actually slightly better better better, better than the 8.8 uh, centimeter yak tiger here um, ever so slightly not much but um, so yeah it's difficult but it doesn't have armor and this thing does so gameplay is very very different between the two it's basically the gameplay between a Stug and a um, Yak Tiger, like that kind of day and night, like armor, no armor, you know, that kind of difference. So um, it depends on what you're looking for. If you like to have armor on your TDs, then you, and you're looking for a German TD, obviously, um, to train your crew. And as you can see here, I have the J Panther and I have the PC SFL for your fumaging. The toaster, yes. Um, and I have my um, my Stug that you can't see here, but the other tier 5 Stug. But that's a premium, technically, um, as far as crew goes. Anyway, so, anyways, um, getting off topic here. So, I was thinking, I had about 10,000 gold, and I was debating what should I get with it. So, I was looking through the tech trees, like, what can I get? Well, I already have all of the American ones. Um, all of the ones that are out in the tech tree, at least. The British, I've considered the 1880-15A, but uh, the gun is 171 pen uh, for a TD, where you don't have the chance to flank or, you know, where you want to stay back a little bit. Eh, it's not a bad gun, but yeah, yeah, it's a bit lacking. Um, it's just, I don't know, it didn't feel like that really would be worth my money. As for the Germans, um, Panther 88, well, I only have one German medium, just that one, and I don't play very often, so, yeah. Lerbe, it was on sale, so I think I could have gotten, or, I'm not sure, maybe, but I have heard pretty bad things about it, and, yeah, yeah. French, um, there is the 12, uh, 12, uh, 50T, uh, again, yeah, yeah, I only have one heavy that I really play, and it's just that one, so, yeah could have done that. As for the Russians, could have gone for the SU-122, has a good gun-ish. Low penetration though, but when you're top tier it can really wreck face, but again, yeah, low pen gun, not really my favorite. I don't like bouncing, <laughs> it sucks. So Matilda, of course, useless, rather not. IS-6 would have been an option, but again, eh, I have my uh, Churchill as my heavy, and the IS-6 is just not really my cup of tea. I hate low pen guns. And again, 175 pen, not that fantastic. Get over to the Chinese. Well, there's the 112, but I already have the WZ111, so I don't really need that one. And as for the Japanese, well, I don't really play the Japanese mediums at all, so an ST8, um, yeah, STA2 is. Mm, eh. And I have my Chino Kai that I didn't pay for. I did a weekend event. I spent like one weekend to get it. It's worth it. It's premium, but yeah. So my options were really the um, British TD, the AT-15A, the German, there we go, the Jack Tiger 88, or the Deca Max was a option as well. Um, yeah, it, it's I don't know. Deca Max again, no armor, good gun, good depression. Penetration 169 is not super duper, but overall that's a pretty good tank. But I figured, you know, I hear such good things about the Yak Tiger 88. Um, so many people are so happy with it. I just had to try it. Try to get a couple of games on the test server. By the way, pro tip, always try to go to the test server if you can and try out the premium you're thinking about buying. 
it's worth waiting and trying it out and seeing if it functions at all. But do keep in mind that a test server is a test server and it sucks balls. Um, so let's take a look at the Actarga 88. And what makes this thing sing is this gun. Now at the same time, let us grab the tiger's gun. So this is a tiger and it's pretty much all round considered a pretty damn good gun. Of course this is a tier 7, do keep that in mind. However, the Act Tiger has preferential matchmaking, that's why it's getting removed. So these two tanks see the exact same tiers. The Tiger will see two tiers above it, this one only one. It's one tier higher, so they see the same. Both, yeah, both of these tanks see tier 9 and both of them will not see tier 10. So the gun is the same, but you see the same tanks, so it doesn't matter. But look at that rate of fire. On a Tiger, it's already pretty good for a gun that does das uh, that much damage. And, you know, it's a good gun all around. Now, compared to this, 11.11 .11 rate of fire. Holy crap. Same pen, same damage. 0.31 accuracy versus 0.34. And this is, a, well, dispersion. I shouldn't call it accuracy anymore. It's dispersion. But it's much more accurate. Aim time from 2.7 seconds to 2 seconds. Yeah. And on top of that... Let's head back to the garage. You get a pretty armor, 250mm frontal armor. Now, this part here and this part here are pretty thick as well. Don't underestimate them, but they are flat, as you can see. They are slightly slow back, but they are flat. So, heat and APCR will pen you more than likely over here. Not so much over here. Um, but overall, it's a really tough tank, and... It's a really good credit earner, and I was thinking to myself, like, why is this thing a good credit earner? Um, I haven't had that many amazing games in it. I've only just gotten it. I've played four games in it. So, I was just wondering, like, why? But it's all down to that gun and its rate of fire. You can just keep putting shell after shell after shell after shell in people's faces. And you just mess them up. And it pays really, really well. So, let's take a look at some gameplay. Now... This is not really a review, this is just a sort of preview and hopefully help you decide if you want to pick this tank up or if you want to go for the Kanon and Jagdpanzer, which is, um, in very short, faster, more mobile, um, lower profile, um, basically see it as this thing, um, like this comparison, right? It's much smaller, it's much faster, much more nimble, um, the gun is actually in penetration, I think it's 212 penetration versus... This is 203, yeah, so 212, so you get about 10 more penetration on the Kanoninyak Panzer, which is going to be this thing's replacement. Now, when I say replacement, I don't mean this thing is getting replaced. You will still have your Yak Panzer um, 88, Yak Tiger, excuse me, 88, but in the tech tree, it will basically take its place. So this one will be removed, and the Kanoninyak Panzer will be inserted here. So that is all for the garage part. Let's take a look at some gameplay, and oh boy, <laughs> you should watch this one till the end. Oh man, sweet justice will prevail. And here we are. I just want to show you guys the size difference between this thing and the Birch Artillery, the FE-304. That thing is tiny! <laughs> it would fit on top of my turret. Um, so, as you can see here, the speed of this thing is less than spectacular by any stretch of the imagination. This thing is pretty slow, but you do get a decent amount of armor for it. And even if you look at the side armor here, it basically has additional side skirts, so... Um, and even the side is sloped, as you can see, so this thing can even... I'm reluctant to say side scrape, but you know what I mean. You use the same technique as side scraping, so you pull back at the most angle you can put the tank in and still aim your gun at them. Now, this thing, of course, being German, the gun arc, so how far the gun can traverse from left to right, is very narrow. If you look at the little... Let me actually pause the game here real quick. If you look at the little preview here, you can see the gun arc. It's really hard to see. It's in black. Let's see if we can uh, turn the camera around a little bit. No. Oh, it's a little bit clearer. That is the gun arc. So it's a very narrow arc before you have to turn your tracks. So that's something you do have to keep in mind. But if you play German TDs, you're pretty much used to it. So, and here you see that aim time. Like, by the time you're in sniper mode, it's already zoomed in. And half the time, this thing is just zoomed in. It's fantastic. So I'm just waiting for the scout here to pop out and try to put one in. Goes into the building. And come on, come on. Ah, bad shot there. And our T37 gets finished off. Good start. 
But enemy light tank gets finished off as well. I guess it wasn't a bad start now. I see this T-44 is in big shit. There's an IS-6 coming for him. And the IS-6 will wreck his face because the T-44 is not a good tank. So I'm deciding here I'm going to have to help him out if he wants to survive this. So, oh, depression. Put one in his frontal track wheel there. Sadly, do not track him. Pull back here to not get shot by the rest. Put one into his lower plate and that's a rate of fire for you. And we get shot by artillery. Pull one to the side of the turret of the T-29. Light tank peeking out in the back there, but I really want to finish off the heavies. And there's artillery again. That will come back later. That damn artillery. So, yeah. Artie is going to be the bane of my existence in this game. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. And right there. Pause it. The reason I couldn't shoot his lower plate or his upper plate there. Oh, that's pretty with all the sparkles. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's because of that narrow gun arc. I was driving sort of in that kind of direction, so I couldn't quite point my gun at him fast enough. I had to traverse my tracks. And that is a problem you will have with this tank. Now, if you stay at range, the further away, you know, if I... Eh, this is a good demonstration. Like, this is how far I can turn the gun. See how very little that is? But if I turn the same amount over there, you'll see that it's actually a lot more. And the further you go, you know... um the bigger the amount of space. It's a cone, right? It's a cone emanating from your barrel, pretty much. So that's the reason why you can shoot him. And that is something you're gonna have to pay attention to when you get to close range. So, let's actually get into normal view here so you can see what I'm doing. Boom on into his hatch there. And I'm moving forward here so that he doesn't have a shot at my lower plate. And again, I have to reverse my tracks there to try to shoot him. And come on. Ah, he gets finished off. Oh well. So I'm looking at my map. Artillery again, this time it's the Hummel, not the M4. <sighs> M40, excuse me. So, yeah, artillery this game, I don't know, they had a hard on for me. It's the only way I can put it, and you'll see it later what I mean. It's ridiculous. They literally had it out for me. The entire bloody game. But more on that later. So, this is what the Yak Tiger does. It can really support flanks and even hold flanks. If you can get hold down, just show your upper hull, especially in like your top tier. This thing can wreck face because you can pretty much pin anything frontally for the most part. Unless you get like E75s, and, but even then you can still pin their lower plate. But um, you get what I'm saying? Like you can really hold flanks with this thing, and that's a good quality to have in a tank. Now, the speed will also be its downside, obviously, because it's not fast. So running back to base when it's getting capped or getting murdered like it is right now takes time so decisions right now i see that there's a scout off to my right and i see there's a buttload of people over there and i see an is three that's pretty much in the middle of it so i see my type 64 here full health he should wreck face with that vk he should be able to take him out easy unless he's using a derp gun and then it's going to be over very quickly so, I'm thinking of going there and then decide, well, no, he should have it. He just fired, he should have it. I can leave him alone. I need to focus on this flank. So, priorities. And put a third person shot into him, you can actually see it. And there we go, and finish him off. That's the rate of fire for you. It is fantastic. And, come on. Ah, not sure where that shot went. Turning my tracks a little bit again, and... Really, we just track him. Well, let's finish him off. And there we go. So, next up, HE. Let's see if we can finish, or, well, at least shoot him in the face. Again, nice third person shot there, just to get an easier bit of a shot into him. And we bounce his shot. He pretty much has no chance to pin us, really. But um, I can't really stop moving here because of artillery. Checking my rear, there's a J Panther 2 coming there. I'm thinking that the i 6 has him. Nope, he doesn't. I'm moving forward here to make sure he doesn't go up the hill and around. Um, just to make sure we can box him in. And I see he's right there with the IS-3. Okay, he's gonna get taken out. J Panther 2 is up there, and he is still full health. Um, excuse me, not full health. Um, he is pretty damaged, that's what I was. Why did I say full health? He's not full health. So, um... Somebody in charge is actually relaying the information, which I really like. Um, it's really handy when you tell your people, like, this dude is one shot. 
and you know it really helps because then you know what to do or what not to do like if he's a one shot then you can risk taking a shot and just making sure you finish him off but if he's full health you have to be way more careful about it um, with all the problems that come with it so I now know that he, at the worst case scenario he can put one shot into me oh well Nope, oh, there he is should have shot a little bit sooner but I still get it in way in time but okay look at chat I don't know if, ah, I can't open it. It says Zero Ghost Catch by the Artillery. Hmm. I think he just called me out. And I don't think that will stand. For that, you shall die. In the most painful way possible. So I'm going to speed up the replay here, just to show you the speed, by the way. 25, 26, we're going slightly down the slope. So, yeah, I was a bit pissed in chat here. As you saw, I was getting pummeled by artillery the entire, entire game. So, yeah, I really want to kill him. <laughs> Especially the Crusader. Who is it? Commando Dan. So the M4 gets spotted, and I'm thinking, okay, good, it's not the Crusader, because I want that Crusader. Let's speed it up a bit more here, as you can see, still pretty damn slow. I'm thinking, he might still be in a base, he might run away, but I need to check the base just to make sure. Let's go back to normal speed here. And I really want to kill, I was actually considering giving the IS-3 here the kill, um, if I even get the kill, of course, but... I was thinking, no, I need to kill this bastard, he called me out, he was trying to shoot me the entire damn game he needs to die by my hand that would be the only way he leaves this game and I find him his shot misses I'm not sure how the hell that one misses normally this thing is pretty damn good on shooting on the move put one shot in artillery tries to put one in misses and I finish him off yes suck it <laughs> you do not call me out I will come and kill you <laughs> <laughs> oh man, such poetic justice. Yeah, should have kept your mouth shut. If you kept your mouth shut, I actually would have let the IS-6 get the kill. But new, or excuse me, IS-3, but new, you had to call me up. Well, and I had to kill you for that, so justice is served. <laughs> Let's take a look at the stats and see why people like this tank. So, that actually gave me a award. Complete with honors 15 personal missions of tank destroyer. Oh, okay. Cool. Phew complete 15 of the missions hmm. and I also managed to complete an acro mission with honor so nice amount of money there um no actually I didn't get the full yeah I did okay so I get 150 credits okay nice so yeah we definitely did that what we need to do thousand damage one internal module and have no damage modules at the end of the game ah, that should be doable for next time so Let's take a look. Mastery Badge First Class. Woohoo! And we got that metal thingy, Exemplary Performance, Tank Destroyer. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And yeah, a couple of standard badges. Let's see what I get here. And some extra experience, always nice. That's the artillery. Yeah, should have kept its mouth shut. Suck it. <laughs> so we walked away with 1168 experience. Second, the Ice 3 actually had top. He did get 5 kills and 3.7k damage done, so well played to him. We only did 2800, which is still pretty good. Well, he didn't do too bad. Far 22, hit 18, pen 14, 2800 damage done. We took 4 hits to the face, 2 from penetrated, 2 did not, 2 were splash damage. And yeah, let's take a look at everything we got here. We walked away with 48k credits profit in a non-premium account. And that is the power of this tank. The repair costs are pretty low. We were pretty wrecked at the end. Um, Two thirds of our health gone. It's only four, but let's say 5k uh, repair cost. And the ammo, we fired 22 and only paid 5k. So yeah, this thing is definitely a good credit earner because the ammo is cheap and the shots do a nice amount of damage and you can just put shot after shot after shot into them. So walked away with 2500 experience. Not too shabby for my fourth game in this thing. Still learning like where to go, where to take it, what to do with it and how, you know, how it reacts and all that. And my crew is definitely not the best, but overall I have to say that's a pretty good vehicle. 
So hopefully this helps you guys um, decide if you want to pick this thing up. You gotta be quick. I think it's getting removed in about two weeks. So I'm not saying you should buy this thing. It is definitely not the best tank out there. It's not an instant I win button. But it is a pretty good credit earner. And if you get it into the good positions, it can really wreck face. But there's a big but. It's also slow, so the chance to get flanked or outcircled is always eminent, and you'll have a bad time. So, you know, you're gonna have to decide what you want. If you have a Yak Tiger already, then you know how this thing plays. It's pretty much a Yak Tiger with a Tiger's gun. Um, that's pretty much what this thing comes down to, or the stock J Panther gun, I think it is. J Panther 2, something like that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, overall, I would say that it's a good tank and it's a good credit earner. So, if you're looking for one, um, this is a good one, um, if it goes with your German TDs that you already have, and yeah, it, that, that's always a decision, like, do you already have a normal X, you know, uh, TD or whatever from that nation, so you can train your crew and all that, you have to really pick what you want and match it with what you already have. So, hopefully this helps you guys out, um, if it did, leave a like, and if you want to see more, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.